Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie Colours. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am here with everybody's favourite video, mine included. It's the completed pages for September 2023. I love watching other people's videos of this one, so I hope that you will enjoy mine equally. Um, so I'm going to move these off to the side and let's get started. I managed to complete 10 pages this month, which was quite an achievement. Um, two of those were whips and several were what I would consider simpler, easier pages. Um, so yeah, but 10 in total and three were from my mythographic books, which I was really happy about. If you didn't see my colouring plans video, I plan to do or to focus on mythographic books. So to get three of those pages done in a month is really awesome. I do consider them more difficult pages so um, they do take a little bit longer for me so I was really happy to get three done but let's start with this one I'm going to zoom you in slightly I apologize I hope I'm not going to make you feel a bit seasick doing that um this is Enchanted Faces Mermaids Fairies and Fantasies Pocket Size Coloring Book by Hannah Lynn now this is a book that I do intend to finish and I think that's a pretty, pretty um, reasonable goal. It's a nice small sized book and um, the pages really don't take long at all to complete. And I am working through this book in order from front to back just because I do want to finish this book and I like every page and I can definitely see myself coloring every page. So I just decided to do it all in order. So the page that I got done this month was this one. It's the Alice in Wonderland themed page. And um, it was a whip. I had already laid in all of the base of um, alcohol marker. So you can see, I, I, and I do the same technique on every page in this book. I base the page with alcohol marker and then um, color over with colored pencil. So I used my Artify alcohol markers. These were a cheap alcohol marker that I bought on Amazon. And um, so I used that for the basing of everything. And then I used my Sargent Art pencils over the top. I love my Sargent Art pencils. I reach for them regularly. They are a budget brand, but they work beautifully. I really like them, really rate them. Um, I used a little bit of Secura White Jelly Roll pen, which you can see in highlights in various areas. And I used a Sparkle Pop pen just for the outside of my page. Um, she is lots of fun. I love this book. It's just a book that I can be bright and colourful um, and just have a lot of fun with and it really doesn't take long to complete a page. I did actually colour part of this um, in a video that I did for the colouring memories hashtag. So I just coloured, did a little bit of shading on her dress I think in that video and then finished the rest of it off screen. Um, but yeah it's just, this book is just fun. I just love colouring the pages in this book and I'm looking forward so I'm hoping that I can get two pages done next month. So I have this beautiful mermaid and then this one which I think is going to be lots of fun because she actually has some acorns and things down here so I can make her kind of quite autumnal. So I'm looking forward to doing this one and I hope that I can get both of those pages done next month. Fingers crossed. But I really had a lot of fun with this. Just really like this book. It's just Fun. It's kind of, um, I can be creative. I don't have to stress too much about getting everything perfect. It's just fun and I enjoy it. So that was that page from Enchanted Faces by Hannah Lynn. Um, this next one was a lot of fun. Sorry, that's me dropping the book on the floor. This next one was a lot of fun as well. I'll just zoom you out ever so slightly. Sorry, going the wrong way. This is Cute Witches by Jade Summer. And this was a new book to me this month. I only just got it. And I really love witches. <laughs> and I love all things spooky and Halloween. Um, but I like the cute kind of spooky, not the scary spooky. Um, so I was really happy to get this book and I couldn't resist doing a page. And I did just do a very quick page. And I actually just finished this page yesterday. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, so I chose this page, which has got kind of like a She's almost like a cowgirl witch with a kind of cowgirl shaped witch hat and her cowboy boots. <laughs> and um, she just, she's a lot of fun. So with this page, I colored everything with Copic markers. So based everything, including the sky with Copic markers. 
Um, and then I used my Artex pencils over the top for the shading and the coloring of um, all of the images. Um, I used Sino White gel pen just for some highlight details here and there. And also a little bit of white paint pen just to add some dot details to the trees, which I'm not sure that really showing up. Um, I colored this page for the hashtags how many pumpkins 2023 which is hosted by Disney Meg's coloring and also for September color your hoard 2023 which is hosted by Tease World of adult coloring and Lubella's coloring and I um, will link all of those down below and I will also try and link all the books down below um, I should say that I'm not an affiliate or anything like that but I don't have any affiliate links but I just like to be able to share if you're interested in the books that I'm using or the pages that I'm doing, then it's easy for you to find. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed this page. Um, it was a lot of fun. I feel pretty accomplished. I find black a really hard color to um, to, to color, <laughs> a really hard, hard um, yeah, color to kind of get right. Um, so I'm quite pleased with how her shorts and her shirt have turned out and her hair. I don't think it's too bad. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. I added a touch of blue to her hair to try and bring out that kind of highlight color. Um, but I do find black quite difficult to get right. So I was pretty pleased with how these turned out. Um, I feel like I still have a lot to learn in terms of coloring people for hair and skin. I do find those quite tricky and a bit of a challenge. So it's good to, to keep practicing and try them out. So I'm glad that I chose to do this page and to see how that worked. Um, other, other than that, um, I was there was a little bit of, um, when I used my alcohol marker, the ink on the page did streak a little bit, which I think you can see in this area and perhaps in, in, in this area as well. Um, I don't think it's, too noticeable but it was a little bit frustrating as I was coloring this a little bit on this pumpkin so on the lighter areas you can probably see it more um so that was a little bit frustrating so I'll have to bear that in mind when I do future pages that the ink can run a little bit with the alcohol marker but it wasn't terrible and it was easy enough to kind of cover up as much as possible with my colored pencil um but overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this page. I think it's a lot of fun and it's bright and colorful and happy. I'm hoping you can see the entire page. I might just have to zoom you out a little bit more to see if I can get it all in. There we go, that might be better. Um, sorry, I'm still getting used to doing this. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. So that was from Cute Witches by Jade Summer. Okay, so next is, this was another whip. Um, that I had this was a very long standing whip that had been going since I think I'd started this page in February of this year so a good few months um, it comes from Worlds Within Worlds by Kirby Rosans I really love this book but this is the very first page that I have done in here and um, I'm definitely keen to do more um, okay so I had already colored the face and some of the like tree branches and a few of the leaves so I just needed to finish the trees <laughs> and I think that was a bit daunting because there was so much it was so much purple um, and then do the background really that was pretty much all I had left to do in the, the water and the few little animals so I used polychromos pencils for everything um, apart from the background which I used dough and ink tents on um, so yeah, all of all of this was just pencil work and then dough and ink tents for the background. I used a tiny bit of um, white cyano gel pen just for his eyes and also a little bit on the water as well. And I used a silver metallic paint pen to add the kind of dot detail in the back, which I'm not sure it's gonna show up, but it's a little bit shimmery, a little bit shiny. Um, so that was what I used. Now, in terms of the colors for this page, I decided to use my color wheel to help me with that. So I pulled out my color wheel um, and I remember doing this back in February and I decided I wanted to use, well, I knew I wanted like an yellow, orange or orange, yellow 
um, face. So those were the colors that I chose for that. And then I was looking at these kind of um, color relationships here. And I decided to go with a um, kind of like a, a split complementary. So I decided for violet and then this kind of bluish color for the background. So that was the thinking. Um, so obviously the blue and the violet are relatively closer, well, more closely related. And then the orange yellow is like the opposite side of the color wheel. So the idea is that the face would really pop out and stand out and that the other colors would kind of Mer not merged together, but would, would be more, you know, kind of faded in the background. So that was what I was hoping to achieve. I think I did achieve that to a certain extent. I don't think it's perfect, <laughs> but I'm overall pretty happy with it. I, I do think it's nice and bright and colorful. Um, and I do really think that that pace, the face even pops out at you. So I am pleased with that and I'm quite happy with the results. And very pleased to get a page done in this beautiful book and I would love to do some more. I really do need to pull this book out more often. I do like Kirby Grosan's artwork and his style and I do find that he makes life really easy because he kind of shows you where the shading needs to go in his images. So it's really, um, it's not too difficult to colour once you get started but it can be a bit daunting, a bit intimidating. Um, but overall pretty happy with how this one turned out. So that was Worlds Within Worlds by Kirby Rosans. Okay, next up I have a, a couple of um, just PDFs. So there's a story behind these. I was contacted by the artist who asked me if I would like to review one of his books. Um, unfortunately, because of where I live, the book wasn't available on Amazon here. So um, instead he sent me through PDFs of some of the pages from his books. So this one comes from a book called Bloom by Color Mania. I, again, I will have links to all of these down below. Um, it is available on Amazon USA. I am not affiliated, I don't get anything for um, kind of recommending it, but I did find these pages really lovely. And um, so I was asking him, about the pages, about how it was printed. So he said it's pretty much regular copy paper and they're single sided. So I printed mine out on regular copy paper and decided to color it how I would if I had the book. So I used alcohol marker as a base for everything and then shaded over with pencil. So for this one, I used Black Widow and Polychromos pencil. So I think I used Black Widows for the pink flowers and then polychromous for the leaves and the purple flowers. Um, and then just a little bit of white Posca for the short kind of um, highlight marks. Um, I wish that I had gone in with a lighter color of Copic to begin with. I feel like the Copics that I started with were a little too dark. Um, and so it was quite difficult to get the high contrast between the colors. Um, so yeah, I, I, when you use like alcohol markers as a base, it's always important to use the lightest color of the, the color that you want to use, if that makes sense, because that's going to be your highlight color. But I do feel I could have gone a couple of shades lighter with both of these for the flowers. Um, but overall, it was a fun one to do. I am no Chris Chang. She colored some hydrangeas recently and they were amazing. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it. It's nice and bright and colorful. I didn't add any background. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And I felt like I just, I'd just leave it as was. And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. So thank you very much to Jamal for sending me this page. Um, as I say, it comes from a book called Bloom by Color Mania, which I will leave it down below. And yeah, I enjoyed that one. So he also sent me some pages from another book, which was called, it is called Mandala Animals. And I decided to do this page. As soon as I saw it, I thought it's perfect for autumn. Um, it is a, sorry, I'm just gonna pull the notes off the back. Um, so again, I printed it on regular copy paper um, and I used my alcohol markers as a base for my image, as you can see and then colored over the top with some colored pencils. So I used my Copic markers and polychromos pencils 
Uh, I used polychromis for everything, including the black and the background. And then I used a white Posca pen for all of the little white dot details. Um, really happy with how this one turned out. I think he's probably my favorite image of this month, the favorite picture that I colored. Um, it was really a lot of fun. I was, I had an inspiration image. Sorry, let me see if I can find it. I can show you my thinking. I'm not sure if I've still got it. Um, I Sorry, I don't think I've still got it, but I, I found an inspiration image on Pinterest um, to help me. And actually I did part of this as a color and chat. So if you look at that video, you will see the inspiration image that I use. And I use that to help me with the colors. And I've got to say, I would never have come up with using blue and gray for my owl, but I love how it works. And particularly how it works in contrast with all of these warmer colors that I've used for the leaves. I think it really makes my owl pop and kind of hop off the page at you. Um, so I was really happy with my color choices for that. So I, yeah, really had a lot of fun with this. I decided to do a bit of a gradient with the leaves. There were so many leaves. I didn't want them all the same color, but I wanted them kind of in the same color family. So yellows and down to oranges. Um, and just overall really happy with how this one turned out. Beautiful image. I'm looking forward to doing a few more from this book actually, because I think the pages in this book are just stunning. Uh, there is a deer, which I would quite like to try out, but just, this was just perfect for autumn. So I did this one as part of the hashtag autumnal owls for, um, hosted by at M colors. Uh, again, I will leave that in the description box below, but yeah, just a really really fun page and really happy with how that one turned out definitely i think my favorite of this month so that was that one next up i have a couple of kind of simpler pages than i completed so this is the book 50 farmers miniatures by camellia angel cova this one um I was inspired to buy this book and the next book by Erica at Elm Colors because I've seen her color some beautiful pages in this book. It's so cute and just a lot of fun. So I was keen to try it out. I've had this book for a couple of months and have not done any pages in it. So I finally pulled it out and decided to give this one a go. So um, I do find these pages I'm not going to say difficult because they are really simple images. Um, it's very kind of almost like kids coloring book style um, artwork. But um, I almost find that a little bit more tricky than the pages that are more intricate because it, there's so much open space and the backgrounds in these pages <laughs> terrify me. Um, but I decided, look, I'm just going to give it a go and just dive in and see how I get on. So I started with my scarecrow and coloring everything. So I based everything with Copic markers. Um, again, you can see I've used Copic markers on the, as a base for everything. And then I used my Prismacolor Premier pencils to shade over everything. And I had a lot of fun doing that. Really love how my little blackbirds turned out. I think they turned out super cute. Really pleased with them. So then all that was left was the background and I decided to try something a little bit out of my comfort zone. I used a lawn fawn ink cube to um, ink in the clouds in the background. I used a lawn fawn um, cloud stencil as well. Um, I'm a card maker, so I have a lot of these supplies to hand, which was really good. Um, I knew that I didn't want to have the entire background covered. So I masked off an area. I used this um, heavy doodle memo tape so it's just like a paper low tack tape, which is very easy to remove. So I just use that to mask off this kind of rectangle around the outside. I did try and measure it out so that it was all nice and even. Um, and then just use my stencil and ink cube for the background. Now, in hindsight, it probably would have been better to do my inking first before coloring because it was very tricky, even using a small brush, it was very tricky to get into some of these areas. So I did end up getting a little bit of blue on some of my colored areas. Um, I don't think it's hugely noticeable, but it's there if you look for it. 
Um, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It's very bright and colorful and fun. And it was just, yeah, it was a nice, quick and easy page to do. And it just, it makes me happy. It's, it's a fun, cute page and I enjoyed it. So again, because it's the first page I've done in this book, I did it for hashtag September Colour Your Hoard 2023 with T's World of Adult Colouring and Lavella's Colouring. So just a fun page. So based on the success of that one, which was 50 Farmers Miniatures by Camellia Angel Cova, I then decided to do a page in this one, which is 50 Woodland Miniatures by Camellia Angel Cova. So I bought this book at about the same time as I bought the Palmer's Miniatures book um, and again hadn't done a page in it so inspired by that success I decided to have a go with a different page so I chose this one which I had actually marked to do because I thought it was quite a nice autumnal sort of page um, and yeah I just had a lot of fun with it so I started with Faber Castell soft pastels which I used in the background I've not used pastel very much so that was a bit of a learning curve it is very subtle very soft um, I probably could have gone and darkened it up a little bit but I was quite happy with the, the kind of, it's just a very soft background um, and it was it was fun um, then based everything again with Copic markers so you can see my Copic marker work on the back there and then I used my Crayola pencils which is the first time I've used the Crayola pencils I have the colors of the world pencil set and the 50 pencil set so I used a lot of the colors of the world for like the browns and um, all of the stuff on the hedgehog um, so they were a really handy set to have actually because there's a huge range of browns in that set and really handy for coloring that sort of thing um, and I actually really enjoyed using them. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, they were perfect for adding all like the texture to my hedgehog here because they hold quite a nice firm point, sharp point. And yeah, they, they, were, they were good. I enjoyed using them. So pleasantly surprised with those. Um, I used a little bit of Sino white gel pen, which you can see for all like the little highlight areas. Um, Oh, I did use glossy accents for the very first time on the eyes of my critters. I'm not sure if you can see that shine, but it's there. <laughs> and I did try using a little bit of glitter gel pen on the centers of my flowers. Um, but unfortunately, my glitter gel pen is not very glittery, so I'm not sure that you can really see anything at all. I used to have a Wink of Stella glitter brush, which was brilliant. Um, but it's run out and I find them really difficult to come by over here in the UAE. Um, so I haven't been able to track one down. Um, I'm going to have to see if I can get hold of one. Um, but the glitter pen that I'm using at the moment is not, as I said, it's not very glittery. So it's not showing up brilliantly, but it's, it's there. <laughs> Just can't really see it very well. So I may have to try and think of something else to use. I do have um, a bit of stickles, so perhaps I can try using that in future. But this page was just a lot of fun. Um, again, it's just a really cute image. I'm getting more confident with, with doing these pages now that I know I can use various things in the background and try various things out. And it's a really good way to practice backgrounds actually because I don't feel any pressure to get this book, you know, perfect. It's a fun book. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of just like cute little images. So I don't feel pressured to get it looking 100%. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of fun to practice and I definitely think I'll be doing some more pages in these books in the future because they're so cute. <laughs> they're just really cute. So that was a lot of fun. So that was 50 Woodland Miniatures by Camellia Angel Cobra. Okay, next up, what have we got left? Just my mythographics. So three mythographic pages I managed to complete. Um, so the first one here is from Mythographic Dream Garden by Fabiana Atanasio. In fact, all of the pages that I did from my mythographics were Fabiana Atanasio books. This book was uncolored previously, so it was really great to get a colored page from it. Um, I have been wanting to dive into these mythographic books for a little while. I am gonna zoom you in ever so slightly. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to do this without making people feel seasick. Um, I, yeah, I have been desperate to dive into these, but I have, I, I do feel that they are more complicated pages. Um, 
the, the artwork is a lot a lot fine a lot finer there's a, there's a lot kind of a lot more going on in these pages they're beautiful though they're so stunning um so i really wanted to try them out which is why i was aiming to work on mythographic books this month um so i chose this page and i printed off an inspiration image which you can see here now you will see my page looks nothing like the inspiration page but i used the colors from this page to help me plan out the colors here so I used like a purple for my buildings with that kind of darker greeny teal colored roof. Um, and then I used the kind of pinks, pinky purples from the trees that they've got in here. I used that for the clouds. I think these are meant to be clouds. Um, I kind of ended up making them look like a little bit of a garden type, flowery garden type thing, which I thought was kind of fun. And then sort of like a bluish green for the leaves of my trees. Now, for this one, I used a water-based marker for basing everything. So I have a very, very cheap set of water-based markers, which I got from Amazon. They are called Lychee Tree. I think there's, I think there's 60 or 100 colors. It's a lot of colors. They're just a very, very cheap watercolor marker, but they work fine and they do the trick. So I just use that to base everything. I used ink tense pencils for the background. I used Sargent Art pencils to um, do all the pencil work, all the shading. And then I used white, pink and gold Posca. So white and pink for the little dot details I've added to the clouds and to my mushrooms. And gold to color all of my hidden objects and add some gold kind of stars and things in the background. And then I used Secura gold metallic jelly pen, jelly roll pen for all of the little trim around the house. That is finer details. Um, so I, things I like about this page, I do like the way that this kind of cloud has come out. I think that looks really cool. I wish I'd gone and added even more ink tents. I did add two layers here, but I feel like it needs to deepen even more. I, I prefer the top part to the bottom part. For some reason, the top part looks darker. I think that's because the artist had some kind of shading in here already. Um, so it's made it look darker, but I think it could have looked darker at the bottom and been a little bit bolder. Um, it would have looked better. Um, the reason I colored my hidden objects in gold was because I had an issue with a mythographic page that I completed earlier, which I, I will come to in a sec. So I decided just to do them gold, which is reminiscent of what they have on the front cover here with all the Im images colored in gold. And I just figured that that's what I would do for this page. Um, yeah, I don't like the hidden images. I would like them more if they fit more with the the background, what, what was going on in the picture, but like you've got like a mobile phone here, you've got a sword, a pencil, a fan, a paper plane, tweezers, a beetroot. <laughs> I mean, I can't remember what that one was. It just looks like a big blob now, but um, yeah, they do, they are frustrating. I know they've got rid of them in recent books. Um, I just, I love the images in these books. I just did not know how to tackle those. So I just did them gold and I think that's fine. I think, I think probably in future, this is what I will end up doing for most of my pictures, um, either gold or silver, depending on the color scheme. But overall, pretty happy with how this one turned out. So again, it was for September Color Your Hoard 2023 with T's World of Adult Coloring and Lavella's Coloring. Um, so yeah, really happy with that one. So Mythographic Dream Garden by Fabiana Atanasio. Then I have Mythographic Menagerie by Fabiana Atanasio. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you this one first because it will explain my hidden objects. <laughs> so this one is Mythographic Paradise by Fabiana Atanasio. So I did this page and this was actually the first, um, first of my mythographic pages I did this month. So with this page, I decided to try and cover the hidden objects. So I used a little bit of white acrylic paint, which I had watered down ever so slightly and just tried to cover up the objects. However, when I went to do my pencil work over top, the pencil did not color over those objects. 
so I feel like they look a mess and they kind of detract from the page so I was a bit frustrated with that which is why when I went to do my other page I just, just decided to color them in gold because I thought that was easier um, but yeah I was a bit disappointed with how that turned out otherwise I really love this page, really love it. Um, so I used, again, that cheap water-based marker for basing everything. I used Prismacolor Premieres for all the coloring and um, shading detail. And I used Posca paint pens in white and gold. So white for like the spots on my toadstools and gold and some of the spots and for the stars and kind of this um, detail work. Um, I have to admit, as I was colouring this, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I The background was the very last thing that I did. So I had coloured everything else in and I wasn't loving it. I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't overly happy with it. I was disappointed with the hidden objects. Um, but all I had left to do was the background. And initially I had thought about going in and just doing like a blue sky background. But I decided that... I would use my color theory again. So I pulled out my color wheel. I looked at the yellows um, here at the top because uh, obviously my leaves I'd colored in yellow and that was the bit that was going to be kind of most affected by the background, if that makes sense. So I decided to go to the complete opposite on the color wheel, which is violet. So I decided to do my sky as a purple sky to try and... Um, contrast against all those yellow leaves and really make those leaves pop so that was the thinking behind doing the purple background and I'm so happy I chose purple because I really think it brought the page to life I wish I had taken a before and after photo um because as I say I had done everything except the background and I was feeling it was a little bit blah <laughs> just wasn't right um but once I added that purple background everything else popped off the page and it made such a difference I could not believe that it really really made a huge difference so I was really happy that I chose to do purple in the background I did the background all with pencil it's not a huge amount of background so um, I think I got away with it I'm not sure that my blending is perfect I did try quite hard to get a nice smooth blend I'm not sure it's perfect but I'm pretty happy with it and overall I love this page I'm just really disappointed with the hidden objects I really wish that had I uh, had been able to cover those a little bit more successfully um, but you live and learn and yeah it's a shame but overall pretty happy with that page and I loved doing it it was a lot of fun very colorful and bright so that was from Mythographic Paradise by Fabiana Atanasio and my final page is this one from Mythographic Menagerie, again by Fabiana Atanasio. And again, the very first page that I've coloured in this book. And it was this one. So, um, this one didn't have any hidden objects, <laughs> which was awesome. So that was nice. No hidden objects to worry about. So I didn't have to worry about covering them or colouring them gold or anything like that. So with this one, I started with my background and I knew that I wanted a galaxy background. So I did my background with Neo Color 2s. Um, I did go over the black areas a couple of times, but I wish I had gone over it again because it's still fairly grayish in areas and I really wish I'd got the depth of that, um, that black. So you live and learn. I, next time I would go over again and add even another, a third coat to that. But um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the galaxy background. I then used Copic markers to base everything, as you can see, and then Sargent Art pencils for all of the shading and detail. Um, a touch of Sparkle Pop pen, I don't know if you can see that, on the spots on my toadstools here and also on the purple toadstools. So I used orange and pink um, Sparkle Pop pen for that. I used glossy accents on his eyes. I was in a glossy accent phase, obviously, after using them the first time. And white paint pen for all of the kind of dot detail in the background. Um, overall, I like this page, but I do feel like it 
I don't know, there's something about it that's not right. I like the separate elements on the page. I like the background. I like the owl, but I think together it's a bit lost. I think it could have done with being a brighter, lighter colored background rather than this dark background because everything's quite dark. So everything gets a little bit lost. Um, so you live and learn. I Yeah, I would probably do things differently next time, but overall, I, I do like it. I just I just feel like it. the owl is a little bit lost. It's not popping as much from the page as I would have liked. Um, I do love how my wood turned out, which was like a stupid thing to be proud of, but um, I really like the depth that I got with the wood and then the highlight details. So I really like how that came out and that was a lot of fun. Um, so I was really pleased with that. Um, and like I say, overall pretty happy with it. I just feel like it could have it maybe, maybe the owl with a different background or the background with a different image. I just feel like it was all a bit too dark, but maybe that's because I'm normally, I normally veer towards very bright, colorful things. So maybe I just need to, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, find my inner, inner darker color lover <laughs> i don't know um but yeah i just felt like it was a little bit all all a little bit lost um i did this one for the hashtag autumnal owls with m colors and of course for september color your hoard 2023 with t's world of adult coloring and the valor's coloring um so yeah really pretty pleased with how that turned out it was a little bit more of a complicated page it did take a little bit longer um, but I did enjoy it. It was a lot of fun and I am looking forward to doing some more pages in this book. Some of them I love. Some of them I'm not a huge fan of. Like, I don't know, some of them I'm kind of like, mm, like this one I'm not 100% fast on. Um, but like this one I think is gorgeous. Uh, this one I like. Um, this one I'm not so fast on. Um, so not a page that I can ever, uh, sorry, not a book that I can ever see myself completing in total, but, um, I would definitely like to do a few more pages in here. I love this, that raccoon one. Um, where's it gone now? Oh, I've lost it. I love this one. Yeah, I love this one. And I think this would be a great one to do for like Halloween, but I feel like I, don't want to do it yet because I really <laughs> I want to be able to do a good job on this page so probably won't do this one this year I might save that maybe for next year if I'm feeling a bit more confident but I love this page um, and there are lots of pages in here that I do like I just I don't like all of them um, but at least there are no hidden objects in this book which is a blessing so that is it that is the final page of my 10 that I completed this month um, overall, pretty happy with all of my pages. I do think, um, oh, yeah, I do think this guy is my favorite this month. I think he's just turned out really wonderful. Um, and I really like the way he pops off the page. So I think he was my favorite fin finished image and I'm going to try and frame him and hang him up in my little boy's bedroom because he is a huge fan of birds <laughs> so I think I'll try and a cheap frame in Ikea and pop that up in his room for him so I'm really happy with how that one turned out um but I had a lot of fun this month really enjoyed all of my coloring and I'm looking forward to next month and seeing what I can come up with I do have a buddy color lined up next month which is my very first buddy color very excited about that one and um yeah I have some other ideas of things that I'd like to do perhaps a few more in my mythographic books again but that is it for today. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please do leave a comment. It's always lovely to hear from you. It's nice to see um, which pages you enjoyed the most. Um, and obviously I'd love to hear about what you're working on as well. Um, I will leave, as I say, try and leave links to all of the books that I've mentioned and all of the, um, the kind of Instagram hashtags and things that I've followed along with. I will leave them in the description box below. Um, just to reiterate, I don't have any affiliate links or anything like that. I don't get anything from promoting those. It's just to help you out if you're interested in any of the books that I've used. Um, but that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And um, take care. Bye.